Hello, my name is Taylor Brooks, and today I will be showing you how to make the perfect pumpkin roll. First, I will show you what ingredients you will need for today. For your pumpkin cake, you will need three large white eggs, one cup of granulated sugar, two thirds a cup of pumpkin puree, three quarters of a cup of all-purpose flour, a teaspoon of baking soda, and a teaspoon of cinnamon. For your cream cheese filling, you will need eight ounces of cream cheese at room temperature, one cup of confectioner sugar, four tablespoons of unsalted butter, also at room temperature, and a half a teaspoon of vanilla. Just a reminder, you will also need some Crisco shortening to coat the pan and wax paper with later on. Some other items you will need will be a jelly roll pan, some mixing bowls, measuring spoons and cups, spatulas and mixing spoons, a can opener, a roll of wax paper, and a roll of aluminum foil. Step one of our recipe is to preheat the oven and set out the butter and cream cheese. First, you will take out the cream cheese and the butter and put them on the counter. You want them to reach room temperature so that they're easier to spread and to mix with your confectioner sugar mix to get to your filling later on. Next, you will preheat the oven to 350 degrees. It's quiz time. Your first question is, have you ever made a recipe that required sifting ingredients, letting ingredients reach root temperature, or rolling up certain ingredients? If so, how well did your recipe turn out? For step two, you will learn how to measure wax paper and grease the jelly roll pan. To grease the jelly roll pan, you will take a paper towel and dip it into the Crisco shortening. You will then wipe down the entire pan in Crisco shortening. Then you will measure out wax paper and cover the pan in wax paper so that all the edges are covered. Then you will Crisco the top of the wax paper so that the cake mix will not stick to the paper later on after it is done cooking. It's quiz time again. Why is it important to let the butter and cream cheese reach room temperature? What is the substance that is spread all over the wax paper and jelly roll pan? Here's step three. Now we're going to learn how to make the cake mixture. First, you will crack three eggs and put them into a mixing bowl. Then you will add your cup of sugar. Once you do this, you will open the can of pumpkin puree and get ready to put that into the mixture as well. Then you will measure out all of your pumpkin mixture and put it into the bowl. Then you will stir it all together. After that, you will add your flour, your baking soda, and your cinnamon. Then you will sift the flour, cinnamon, and baking soda into the mixture. It is important to sift your flour so that it has no lumps in it and that it will go into a smooth cake mixture. It's quiz time again, quiz number three. What are some other recipes that you can think of that require you to sift ingredients and or let ingredients reach room temperature? Also, what is your favorite recipe to bake? Here's step four. Now we will pour our cake mixture and put it into the oven. First, we will pour our pumpkin cake mix into our jelly roll pan. It is important to get all of it out of the bowl so that we will have an even amount on in the jelly roll pan. Then you will spread out the mixture so that it covers the entire pan. You will then shake the pan so that it is all evenly distributed. Next, you will put it into the oven at 350 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes. I typically do 17 minutes because it meets in the middle. You can always check the cake at 17 minutes and see if it needs uh, further evaluation. Step five. Now we will make our cream cheese filling. First, you will add your room temperature butter and your cream cheese to a bowl. 
Then you will add your cup of confectioner's sugar and vanilla. Then you will start to stir the mixture. It will still be a little hard to make it first, but once you get going, it'll be easier. Once it becomes more room temperature, the mixture is easier to mix. It will become a glossy-like substance and will be more thin. Step six, you will now take your cake out of the oven and let it cool. Your cake has been baking for 15 to 20 minutes. I baked mine for 17, but you can always check to make sure that it's good to go. When you take your cake out of the oven, you can poke it with a toothpick or a fork or something to see if it is done. If the fork or toothpick comes out clean, then it is done. If there are particles attached to it, you may need to add a few more minutes to your cake. How about another quiz time? How can you tell when your cake is done baking? What temperature is the cake in this recipe supposed to bake at? We're on to step seven, which is icing and rolling. First, you will take your cooled cake, which has been cooling for about 45 minutes or so. That's how much time I normally take to do mine. But as long as it's cool and ready for the icing, I think you'll be good to go. Next, you'll take your icing and pour it on top of the pumpkin cake. Once you've done that, spread it out with a spatula or other tool so that it covers the entire top of the pumpkin cake. Then you will start to roll it into a roll little by little. You will pick a edge of the cake and pull it from the pan. You will then slowly take the wax paper off of the end and start rolling it into a roll. This may take some time and some practice, of course. It took me a good five or six tries of making this pumpkin roll before I finally perfected it. This is a recipe from my grandma, so of course I had her help at first, but then I moved out on my own and it was hard for me still but you know, I've mastered it now. The key to making the pumpkin roll is to making sure it doesn't crack in many places and it is tightly wound. When you're finished rolling it, put it onto some wax paper and aluminum foil and get ready to put it in the refrigerator. Here's another quiz time. Your first question is, what famous Little Debbie snack is also in the shape of a roll? Hint, it's one of my favorites. Question two, on what day of the week is Thanksgiving held on? Step eight, and your final step is your finished product and storage. Here, I'm cutting out a piece of my pumpkin roll so that you can see what the inside looks like. Ooh, doesn't it look appetizing? This pumpkin roll specifically had a small crack in the side of it. However, if you take your time and roll it correctly, it will end up just fine. Now you will wrap it in wax paper and aluminum foil so that you can store it in the refrigerator. It is best to eat after you have refrigerated it for a while. Refrigerate for a few hours and then you are free to enjoy. Congrats! You are now an expert at making pumpkin roll. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and now can use your new skills of sifting, having things come to room temperature, and rolling cake into a roll to use in other recipes. Thanks for joining me today and see you soon.